So now we just want to get into image planes. So to reload this scene, let's just click on Lightbox. Lightbox is sort of your opener window for presets, I guess you could say. And let's just double click on that sphere and we don't need to save. So let's just go like that and we're back and ready to do our image planes. Now, because this is a new scene, let's just go Alt V and bring that angle of view down to something like 25 and we're ready to go. So the first thing we wanna do is we wanna bring in our image planes. Now, these image planes are all stored in this in these menus and stuff like that, but because I've just made the menu here, it's really easy to find. So here's the image planes that's also opening up quite long. It should look like that. And when we open up the front and back, now we can just put our image planes in there. Now there's three ways of doing image planes in ZBrush. All of them are quite decent in their own right, but we'll just do the one that puts them on the grid for starters. So this is a front and back, just click on map one and load your image there. This is the front view. So I'm going to navigate across to my folder, which is the simple dragon. I've just made, created a Maya project and I'm going to create a folder here. Let's do it now called ZBrush. So I'll just put it inside of the Maya directory because we will be planning hypothetically to animate this guy. So the ZBrush folder would be there, but I, I would always just still work, work out a source images for my ref and just the normal Maya way. So let's just bring in the front view. There's the front view of our simple dragon. And what that's done is it's bring it, brought it up there and it's just put it on the back gridded plane. So if you turn the grid off, which is actually called the floor, and we take that off the floor grid, that will actually get rid of our image planes altogether. And, and the object goes a little bit transparent as well, as you can see. And the grid plane turns kind of this greeny color. So you can change all these things in the settings, but uh, that's not too bad for us. And we're gonna map something onto the ground anyway. So let's just now close that. And we're gonna bring the up and down and we'll go map one import. And this is the up and down. So this is the down, the top view. We'll bring out our top view of the dragon there. Close that one and left and right, map one, import, and we've got our side view. Now you'll notice that the side view is pointing the wrong way. So we can just hit flip. And you've also got a whole bunch of stuff. So if, if it's not, everything's not correctly aligned, I might have to do a little bit of tweaking on the top view later. You can scale and horizontal offset, vertical offset, angle, rotate these guys around. So there's a few pretty easy to follow sort of switches there to adjust. Adjust will open up a whole extra settings and you've got a whole bunch of stuff that you can do the image planes, but best to put them in Photoshop nicely and so they all load up. Now again, our floor is there so we can switch those on and off. The other thing that you can do too is you've got this X, Y, and Z. So you can actually take off the X and the Z and the Y individually. So if you just want one of them up, you can do one of them at a time too, which is kind of cool. The other thing that we've got on this too, which you might see me doing, we'll see how we go, is we've got this enhanced opacity, enhanced factor and frame opacity and our P line opacity. So when we go over the model, it actually gives you these P lines as projection lines. I'm not necessarily a massive fan of that. So let's just switch that one off. That just means those lines will go away. The enhanced opacity will make that brighter or darker. So we can keep that at around 0.75, which is the default. The enhanced factor will affect this. So you can go right up to 100%. Sorry, let's not do the frame opacity, which I think is a 0.25 right up. And you can see that that just becomes more invisible as we look through that, which is quite handy. And let's put that at 0.75 by default. And we've also got frame opacity too. So that's sort of making the grid really strong or weak. So let's just keep that at 0.25 is fine. One other thing you'll notice is you've got these little sort of like local rotation axis as we call them in Maya or just the center pivots for each of the, the planes. You can actually come into display general. This is all the display general stuff. And those are actually the axes. So just grab that one there and bring it down. And uh, this is that. So this is all spread out throughout the interface. If you need to find out exactly where it is, just control on that. And it will actually show you the button path here. Button path, draw access. If you look under there's the axis slider controls, and then directly below that it says button path, draw access. So that corresponds to draw and then access, which is actually pretty hard to find this one, but there it is, there's draw access. So if you need to find anything in the interface, just do that if you're looking for extra switches.